Are it's, we going to say the number? Should we say the number? Let's do it. Go. You tell me. Okay, it I, is. I know. Okay, I it know. is. Yeah. You ready for it? You and I met in the theatre. Do you know how many years ago when we were in that play together? I do. It's It finishes with a zero, but it starts with a four. It's 40 years, Baz. 40 years! Oh so here we are, sitting on the stage. It's for kind the, of crazy, isn't for it? the Australian production of Moulin Rouge, which is on fire. Of course it was a massive hit around the world, but the thing about it, in it's in the fabric of the Australian yeah. culture. There's an expectation from an audience because there's people that come and see it who have... Who, we went to the movies, had their first kiss at Moulin oh. Rouge, or they yeah. they watched it. You know, um, they wore out the, v, the 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 DVD and stuff. It's it's just like there's a difference, I think, with the audience here that they they have an ownership to it. I really agree with that, and I think look, jump cut from the forty years ago. Yeah, sure. I don't think we realised you and I how lucky we were that we were in a country that believed in the arts yeah. that where the government funded the arts, where you could have a theatre with 50 people in it 100%. and do an experimental play, you know, which is what yeah. it was. And because of that, we both grew up in a, in a world where, you know, whether it was film or theatre, there was a belief that here in this country we had something to contribute. Now, I think that directly contributed to my belief that why, why couldn't we reinvent the musical here in Australia? I mean, obviously making new works is great, yeah. but to be what I like to call myself the uncle of the production. Yeah. You know the thing about an uncle is has all of the fun of the kids but none of the responsibility, <laughs> yeah. right? And like, yeah. and now... It's like me with the cast. Well, because this production, I mean, I'm telling you around the world, people come up and say, oh, you've got to see the Australian production. It's so great. But the idea that I'm going to bring my children yeah. and actually come to a show that I'm somehow vaguely you know, involved well, with well, somewhat, yeah. as an uncle, yeah. but really just be able to enjoy it. And, you know, um, you know... Because yeah. you feel the roar of the crowd every night. The show is so beloved in this country. Yeah. It's loved all around the world. Yeah. But it's done so well. And Ziedler, although yeah. he's based on a historical French character yeah. at the Moulin Rouge, yeah. in the interpretation in this, both the movie, but in the version you're doing, yeah. there's something very Australian about that character. I mean, he could be a refrain. You know, yeah. There's many a Queensland uh, yeah. character in he history. He could be Celeste. I be. mean, Sir Les Patterson, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. There's a Zillerism about Sir Les, the cultural yeah. attaché. <laughs> That's what I found playing the character and yeah. being with the audiences. I think the extra advantage that we have as performers, Australian performers, doing a work that, that comes from something that you have created mm. is that almost like your work almost... Our playing style as Australians kind of fits absolutely like a glove. Yeah. It's about the big things, it's about the big sort of myths and the Orphean stuff and stuff, but it is about being kind of pretty grounded as well. Yeah. What I love about this role is that I can be as big and yeah. rambunctious and stupid yeah. and sometimes play school as I like, yeah. but then when the moments of absolute truth there... You flip it. And it's, that's what I'm loving yeah. so much doing. Yeah. Is, is, yeah. It's almost the bigger you can be and then the next second yeah. turn it to absolute truth yeah. is... And, you know, that's, that's, that comes yeah. from the genesis of your work of the well, show. It's interesting. It's an Orphean story. And he's the king of the underworld. That's and so those true, characters yeah. want to keep everybody in the underworld. You know, the myth is that along comes this gifted singer. Mm. Sing for me and you may go free. But he sets a trap. Mm. He really wants to keep everybody... You know, we're creatures of the underworld. We can't afford to love. Yeah, that's, that's, you know? It's almost my favourite one that, yeah. of mine in the show. Yeah. Because I think that... Is the ethos of Ziedler. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, Cherub, I can really care for you. Yeah. I do love you in my way, but, you know, in the end, mm. I can't really afford love. But the Bohemians live only for truth, beauty, freedom and love. And that's the dramatic tension. Look, I'm, I'm glad we've let everyone in on the vague that we, we worked together 40 years ago. Yeah. And they were really special days. But what no one knows is that the other... I mean, we didn't get to actually do scenes together, but we also mm. appeared in another show um, together, and that was Country Practice. <laughs> we did. <laughs> My God. But that's, you know what? But that's, Simon, another, that's for another day. That's for the next episode of <laughs> In Conversation with Simon and Baz. See you later. See you later. <laughs> <And cut. laughs>